Okay, there we are. Once again, the famous Bendix Diner, as seen on the Jerry Seinfeld show, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. Hasbro Kites, New Jersey, Route 17 South. I'm headed to meet with William H. Morrow III, commercial voiceover specialist and former NFL football quarterback. For more wackiness or God knows what we're going to talk about. Maybe more madness. Who, who the hell knows? Who the hell knows? Website meetings just don't work out. 80 plus percent, they said, don't work out. Well, people are, people are, are people nowadays from a social standpoint, these days, very dysfunctional? Again, like no, no, not just a computer. I've met people in bars Everything. locally. The people are just dysfunctional. Why do you think they're dysfunctional? Because they're on the fucking computers and the, the websites and tweeting all goddamn day. Stay off and back like human beings throughout the day, not just when you. No, they don't. Off. They they don't. They don't. They don't know how to co communicate. Yeah. Let me ask one more. Do you think recently Donald Trump kind of tripped? tripped himself and spilled the beans about Russia's involvement in the 2016 election? Because well, the Secret know, Service we, we made a statement. That. Yeah, that's, that's no fact. Though. Yeah, but I like, I like to, you know, yeah. ask it. Hold on, let it, let it, let it get. Well, you got, you got here, yeah. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Yes, you got the swing is what I'm saying. Yeah, but I like, I like the feel of it. Okay. All right, now I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm done. Relax. Man. Most people, the vast majority, just don't have a clue, do they? You're beating that subject to death. Reality. Reality. Is what I'm always talking about and discussing actual reality. Oh, man. There you go. Big yes. Most people, like my dad was always right, you just can't get through to them, can you? I guess it was just one of the downfalls of technology. You know, the whole thing Which is destroy humanity. With, you know. Well look at look at robots. If they if they're having technology going to destroy mankind in the long run. Yeah. Don't okay. talk to me about robots. My dad and I discussed those in the early 60s. You won't even more. I watched, so. a, I watched some science documentaries where Japan is actually creating these robots that can actually develop a personality and think for themselves. Is this the beginning of something very bad? No. That's a little odd. Human time, it doesn't care what country it is developing robots that are not speeding up and thinking for themselves more and more and more. This is bad. Will mankind, humankind, regret what he's doing with electronics and artificial intelligence? The morons, the ba basic percentage of humanity just will not listen, will they? There you go, Jimmy. You can't get through to people, can you? Thank God. Yeah. Am, I, am I like most people? <laughs> Is that good? Uh -huh. 
do I realize, understand, and know what's going on? Yeah. yeah. Artificial intelligence, thinking and reasoning for itself, will they decide that it is time to destroy humanity? It's going into a big yes. Is, um, I don't mean to be comical, but is Donald Trump similar to our acquaintance Eileen, where he keeps on changing his stories? She changes, she changes, and changes. The only problem with, with Trump making statements is that it's on record and he's the president. And then, <laughs> um, I was watching a Western and there was a dance, a social gathering, where people were actually communicating with one another, talking. Is this much better than the uh, technology we have now with the smartphones socially yes Simple question. no but it was electronics are destroying yeah no no, no no but i just know no, no, i'm not asking you you ask it yeah oh, oh i'm sorry go ahead i'm trying to get through Electronics are destroying mankind. No, you say electronics I have. Electronics are destroying mankind. You say I have a no, question. No, electronics. Go. Electron. I mean, Why are you in a hurry? What's not, wrong with you, man? I just want to get to it. I don't want the small talk around it. I want to see the answers quick. Well, it's Mike. If it. All right. If it's your question, it's your question. Our electronics. Don't hold it there. Go. Let destroying. It, wait, wait, wait. Don't let it swing. Our electronics destroying mankind as we know it. Came out with what today? A teenagers and ADHD or whatever. It's called. Yeah. Well, now there's also a lot of. Are there really a negative side effects that I read in these articles about vaccines today? Yeah, because they're freaking spiked. There, there's an oligarch plan to depopulate the poor and uh, depopulate the mainstream. These so-called smartphones, computers, and what have you severely affect brainwaves activity in the human being, don't they? Oh, you hold it to your head. It truly is an addiction, isn't it? Okay, go ahead, go. What'd you say, Jimmy? Oh, no. Yeah, if you hold it near your head, that's for damn sure. Well, no, no, it's got nothing to do with that. It's got to do with what does the information help people panic when they have it taken away from them the whole bit. Oh, okay, psychological. Here's the whole point there. No, they showed that it does all this. The brain waves are affected. They pick people up for electrodes. It messes it. It's caused more teenage suicides. Youth. Depression is sky high like never before. It's affecting your Like it's an addiction. Happy electronics cause more, cause much more depression among people. Electronics and all this artificial crap is going to be our downfall as humans, isn't it? There you go. Bam. Right to the point. We are headed for a downfall. Yeah, I, I know people personally that are addicted to Facebook. No, you're addicted to the computer. You no, no, I spent a, I spent a lot less time on Facebook than you think. Well, I hope you Twitter, I like. You didn't use to see that Twitter. No, no, you should see, you should see the awesome videos and articles on Twitter. The, po the political stuff. Is Twitter a total load of bullshit? No, not when CNN and Chris Cuomo's talking. Is Twitter incredibly abused by humans? How much is it? 
We shouldn't use any of it. So my, my, you know how I feel about it. We shouldn't use any of it. It's a joke. That's why I refuse to use any of it. Well, I, I do agree. I don't. I just use a phone as a phone, and that's it. Social media, which is the general term, is it very addictive to humans? Uh, went right away into into. Well, we knew that. That just verified. We know that. Well, that's. I just got through asking. Yeah. Is it going to destroy mankind? So yes. Yeah. Holy we'll that, crap! Look at this. Yeah. Right no, I like. I I, I like. Uh, if I have a story to add to it, there's a reason. Like, like the old-fashioned way of meeting people when people get together and they talk. You don't want a computer to fuck you. I'm totally against it. Yeah. Well, when you meet people, when you go out, it's like Howard. It's like it's a casino. Howard's you too. People put you down on the screen of the computer. You come up, hey, cocksucker. I remember that fucking face is hitting me face to face. They won't do it. do that. They'll do it. Because you're a punk. You know, I right. bust your jaw. Well, well they'll, That's what, what, they'll, what they'll do is they'll talk shit about it. They're big and brave when they're on behind the screen. Well, they call that keyboard courage. Like I did with Lou, play for the Cosmos, when I featured on uh -huh. Bergen. Right. I said, my, remember the story? My dreams have been answered. Okay, fucking mouth. He got five warm ups and had to quit. His hands hurt. I said, they're warm ups. I said, you're a fucking ass. <laughs> you know, so, uh, it's stupid courage. Yeah, like liquid courage, keyboard courage, you know. <laughs> but, there's our friend and or acquaintance here at McDonald's, Eileen, and she loved Jimmy. Oh, they have a right. Yeah. yeah. But she's very entertaining. I mean, that's, that's all I... <laughs> she loves you. Yeah. She loves to entertain me. Our friend and the war acquaintance here at McDonald's, Eileen again. But she loved me. <laughs> oh God. Boss, she's all yours. Yellow teeth and all. She's yours. You ever see her teeth? They look like like yellow corn, niblets, whatever. Kind of film. Right. Ooh, film. Oh, 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 please, don't give me that thought. She loves you. She loves you. I'll be doing this one day after her, after 24 hours in her company. See what you attract? <laughs> That's because you sound like men, God. That's why you attract the finest, the finest of the finest. She was a sweet girl. I mean, not for me. No, she know. doesn't mean any harm. No, she no, she no, just say, you gets. Know who, you know who's a sweet girl, and I enjoy talking with Karen. I feel sorry. I feel sorry you for. Listen to me? Karen is a nice, young, sweet girl. Oh no, Karen's a great. Like yeah. Her. No, she's very likable. Very likable. Yeah. She's been here a long time. Thirty-seven years. I think. Really. She's Thirty-seven years. She was thirty-four, thirty-seven. Think about that. You know the guy that does uh, physical fitness seminars. He doesn't want any of his clients to know he drives a forklift in a warehouse for 40 years. He, ha he has a union job. He makes real good money. He's got a big pension. I go, why? Why are you ashamed? I don't want. I don't want to tarnish my image. He's worried about image. You know. Oh, I don't know if that's good or if it's bad or stupid. I don't know. Like, like you're doing seminars and like you get and you get a lot of money from Imagine people. if we went to one and I yelled from the crowd, hey, ain't you that forklift driving guy? <laughs> and you have untapped potential. I saw you that. in a warehouse, didn't I? <laughs> you where, oh, where, where are you tonight? <laughs> I'm on the forklift all alone. And then you, and you start dancing. Right. Now, um, I know we, dig we digress a little bit, but um, image, like my uncle Phil said, when he was electronic engineer, he, worked, he was uh, vice president for Westinghouse at one time. He told me, prestige is all in the mind. Your, your, your version, your perception of prestige can be different from- I agree from with the Canon, Canon camera, things of Andre Agassi. Image is everything. Monica Patrick, right? She's a race car driver. She's never won anything. 
but she's the most popular there is because she's pretty. Her image. She, yeah. Think about. Am I right? Right. Now the only. Am I right? You're right. Now the only See, thing that. What is she? What is she won? She's pretty, beautiful. Look how they made a big thing. They made her their superstar, right. and you haven't won a damn thing, but, Jimmy. Look at that big promo with Billie Jean King and Bobby Riggs way back when. Oh, that, he, was, he was so much older back then. It was not even important. It was silly. It was not even important. They made a big deal out of it. I would Image. like to see the number ones play today, like a Serena Williams though play. Oh, you ever see the physique on her? Yeah. She's strong. She's good. She's, she's too good. strong for tennis. No, she's not. She no. just lost, Jimmy. No, no, no. She's built for, for better. She trains. She just gave birth not too long ago. Besides. So, uh, I'd like to see her play the best man. Uh, Bob, uh, 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 Rafael Nadal or the other guy that just won with her. a bad idea. Name. Just, hey, you lose, you lose. I'd love to just see it. Have them play in Las Vegas in, in an arena. It would just be fun. It'll, it'll be... And tell them it's important. Play your best. This is not just for fun. Play your best. Yeah. Play hard, please. But I'd love to see yeah. it. I would. I mean, I'm sure others would love to see it. I mean, Lucha Underground has mixed gender matches, but that's choreographed. That's professional wrestling. But we're talking about Serena Williams against a male champion. That would be a fantastic well, idea. Somebody, I forget who it was, a pro, said she wouldn't last against the best man. Why not? Say, well, I don't know, but well, because women are the weaker sex. They have little hitters hard, blah, blah, blah. They're not yeah, but Serena? So let's, let's try it right now and see. Serena Williams is not the average woman. Well, let's try it and see. I think it'll be it'll be interesting. It'll be fun. I'm not going to argue about it. I think let's do it. I uh, Normally, you know me. I, you know what I would say if you were her? Let's shut up. Let's get it on. Let's do it. That's it. End of argument. If, if somebody challenged Serena Williams, I'm sure she would take him up on it. Hey, you lose nothing to be ashamed of. You're still great. Look at the purse there. You're still great. What you want up against? And she might not. But she not. She might not lose by much either. It could be by a nose. She might win too. She might we win. Don't, we don't know. That's why I'm saying let's settle the argument and make it two or three nights in a row. Best two out of three. What if she? What if Serena Williams had an arm wrestling match with her male counter? She might beat him. Oh, I I I cry fix. <laughs> the referee's paid off. <laughs> he lost all purpose. Bad call. I know what I, I know what powerlifting the judges you have, there's a two minute a two second you pause make sure you lock bench it. press you lock yes it. yeah like when Ted Arcidi set a record for 700 some odd pound bench press oh, it, 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 it was Duncan nah. you mean there were Dunkin Donuts they were empty empty <laughs> they were styrofoam painted black they were nothing He's, you ever see how big Ted Arcidi is I don't know powerless no he's just a big big dude I don't and but i'm saying paul you know a, paul anderson and yet on a, no i don't and yet on a football field Bill Kazmaier? he could even walk probably uh, their bones are you know see that's yeah. the whole thing they it takes move. a power you know how many pro wrestlers tried out for our football and not one could make it they walked off said you guys are out of your mind you ever watched the strongest man competitions yeah, I've seen that many times. Did you i don't know if you noticed it but there's something called an atlas stone it's a huge yeah, concrete you know one guy went backwards and and, and, yeah, and got hurt and got severely hurt these guys couldn't cut it on football so what does that say well they didn't have the stamina maybe but even the strength on the line, they get killed. They get pushed out of the way so fast. Pushed out of the way? Even within the first 30 seconds? 30 seconds? No. When the ball's snapped, you've got one to two seconds. Bam, immediate. But, but you, have, you see the size of these these guys? Jimmy, stop basing everything Muscle on Muscle mass. No, it's not. They're not. They have no definition, most of them. They can't block with a damn. And sometimes they make fun of defensive football players that are having big bellies. Sometimes my, some of my line with Jimmy Big Richie was 425. Oh, wow. Joe was 390 something. When you get in the huddle and they look at me and say, Billy, ain't nobody coming in my side. And I said, I love you guys. They come out of their stance when I yell, but they come out and bam, you shove people back. So we're talking about seconds. No, split seconds. Split Jimmy, the ball snaps, bam. And they're immediate. And they're like, there's like, it's not even. Instead of saying one, it's one. That quick, as I'm saying, as soon as they hear, they Snap. come in, they go, bam, they get hard. It's like simultaneous. Ball goes up, go, in, they in. go into, they come out of their stance. Ball gets snapped, boom. And they hit. And they hit. 
and no no wrestler could make our team. Obviously, no soccer player could make it. They thought we were out of our minds. Well, football's a bone-crunching sport. I mean, come on. It's a very tough sport where you bet we're good at. And, and you know what kills me? How international people uh, build up soccer and make fun of our, our football. Really? They oh. say... Well, I, I, I had it done to me, you know. Uh, I, you come out and play. Like I said, I've had many soccer players try it out. When, when I used to practice with Kenny before, when we were going to the Jets over here, uh, 77, 78, uh -huh. Bergen, they used to open up the gym. Their gyms were huge right. for us and send class, cut classes and let them come down and watch us. A little soccer player way down there, about 30, 35 yards. Hey, throw me one. Okay. Hit him in the chest, bam, right on his back. Knocked him right down. He gets up and he's walking away. He goes, what are you fucking crazy? I said, catch the goddamn thing. Well, that's the whole general idea. They're supposed to, like, catch it. <laughs> no, I, you never saw the drill. Or were they wearing proper gloves that they have now? No, he was a soccer player. Oh, he was a soccer player. That doesn't matter. All my former my, my receivers hated it. They come out with a new pair of gloves. They'd be ripped during warm-ups, Jimmy. Like neoprene rubber or something? Uh, skin diving, scuba diving. Yeah, gloves. scuba diving They'd gloves. be worn during warm-ups. Not even like, they said, God damn you, Billy, every time we get gloves, you rip them. <laughs> so they, that's how hard I threw a football. Guys had welts all over their chests. Skin was torn. Okay, sternum, welts right in the well, sternum. One guy I thought, well, he almost died. He got hurt real bad. You know, he yeah. went down and he, everybody ran out to him. He was blue. You know, if you get hit in the, in the, in the heart area, you can stop the heart. Well, yeah. he went down real hard. You saw him go down. And you heard a flying. Fred wore a thick medallion around his cell. Neck with a chain. It was a little bit thicker than a silver dollar, which was hard as a rock. And when the ball hit him and knocked him on his back, it went flying across the gym at Bergen. Somebody went to retrieve it, and they stood there, and everybody went running over, and they went, holy shit. It's bent, right? It was bent. That's how hard I threw a football. Nobody wanted Why, when I played baseball, guys did not want to play for his base when I was a shortstop or catcher? I'd bust your hump. It hurt. Why do you think they took wet sponges and put them inside their gloves? Because it hurt. Wet and sponge. I had no effort. I used to tell the guys in the field, next grounder, no step. I saw him. I took no step, not a step on my throw. You know the first baseball mitt? It was just a leather work glove. I saw. I watched the documentary. Oh, sorry, it didn't even have laces. No, they did underhanded pitching back well, it then. It didn't even have laces. No, it didn't. It was, it was no. You know but why? You're talking late 1800s. Come yeah. on, boy. Look at the games evolved. Come on, look at bats. How they evolved. Bat right? Masterson. And composites and graphites and everything else. Yeah. Well, but the reason why they had no mitt is because they were underhanded pitching back then. Well, no, they also didn't. Well, no, no, you're wrong. You're right. You're no, wrong. but they did it hard. No, though. they also had periods before that where you didn't even use a glove, Jimmy. And the catcher decided, hey, my hands are getting messed up, man. Well, not really. Because the ball wasn't thrown that hard. These pitchers weren't pitchers yeah. per se. They well, were lobbers. Yeah. You know. I mean, today's even in softball comes in at 93, 94 miles an hour. It's a fast pitch softball. Oh, that's right. The professional when yeah, the, they show the women's women's softball the tournaments. The first time I ever played softball, they whipped that was suck. fast pitch pitch. <laughs> fast pitch pitch. And my first swing, first pitch, deep over the center fielder for a long double. Whack. I used to. Somebody taught me how to. My mother dated a guy who was a um, with the Minnesota Twins. Uh, he told me I'd throw a knuckle, knuckle curve, but you know, the old, the original knuckle ball was like that. But then they started doing it. I did it. I did it. I knew I couldn't strike. I didn't strike out in little league. So uh, Hoyt Wilhelm was with the Orioles. Yeah, that's right. I had a, uh, a friend of mine, Pete Wilbur Pete. Wood. Oh, what's that? Peter. Well, he was on the class AAA farm club of the Yankees. Always talked about how good his pitching was. We were Benegas. I said, yeah, you've never faced a hitter like me. I don't strike out here. Blah, blah, blah. We'll go out of blah. I'll beat you at Vets Field. 30 pitches, you won't get one by me. So you can see that ball coming oh, in that fast. And I can't hit opposite field. I'm too quick, no matter what. Always a powerful power hitter. First 29, it was a rainy day. First 29, I knocked the crap out of the ball. I had my contacts in. I'm like, oh man, wait a minute. You want to stop? I said, no, nah, let me do it with one eye. He got that by me. I win. I win. 
I said, Peter, I know that was best. I said, you won't get 30 by me. 29 of your 30, you didn't get by me. I kind of think I won, Peter. You know? Yeah, he God, didn't, he, didn't, your he didn't say a word. You. That's incredible. 29 of 30, and I did it with one eye. Had my eye been clear, I would have hit that ball. Even my parents say, this kid's in this case. He doesn't strike out. I grounded out and fly out, of course, but I didn't, I didn't go down swinging. You connect. I did. Always made contact. Always made contact. Always. Always. Yeah, what was it? Abu Powell, uh, he gave credit to Mark Mark Belanger was the shortstop. A first baseman. Davey Johnson was our second baseman. That's that's right. That's right. Uh, Elrod Hedrick. Eddie and Murray. Remember these guys? Paul. Don Paul, Don Baylor. Don Baylor. Don Buford. Paul Blair. Remember all the orders of the was like nobody It, it was um, Elrod Hendricks and Andy Etcheberry were the two catches. Elrod Hendricks and I sat for two hours over here when it was the sheriff. Really? Elrod Hendricks? Because he left what? the Orza, and when he retired, he became the bullpen coach of the Yankees. Oh, shit. We sat there in the lobby for two hours. Well, Ken Singleton started with the Mets, went to the Orioles for a long time. No, not a long time. And then he went to the Yankees towards yeah, the end. Yeah, but go for a long time at any of those. Well, I mean, I his think his, was the best. his career wasn't, like, ex ex extremely... Eddie Murray for the Orioles? My God. Yeah, my aunt and uncle knew, knew yeah, Eddie Murray. The Orioles were the only team in history with 420 game winners, I want to see. 420 game winners. You think about that. Eddie Eddie Murray was a great. Oh. Yeah, but you know what? Eddie, when they had Eddie Murray and uh, Cal Ripken Jr., that that's like the um, Miami Dolphins with Dan Marino, and he has nobody else good except Dan Marino. Oh, it's no, like, that's not true. Like in other Marino words, had two great the the, 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 the Marx brothers who maybe had Mark Mark. Mark Duper and Mark, was it Mark Clayton or whatever. He had two great outside receivers. No, he had great. Receivers. Well, no, I mean, I mean the um, uh, the Orioles did just, well, did make right. it to the World Series, yeah, but, but they mean, lost to Pittsburgh. Well, but we also won an '83 again too. We won '70 or something, something, something. But the bottom line is, the best don't always win. Always remember that rule. The best don't always win because things happen. Like a like a racehorse. Okay, let me tell you another thing. I was thinking about it today. You remember that famous catch by Dwight Clark in the back of the end zone against the Cowboys? That Joe, Joe Montana threw up and he went up like that to win. It's called the catch. From that was not Lynn Swan, the other guy, the other guy. Swan's Pittsburgh. No, not Lynn Swan. I'm sorry, Rice, Jerry Rice. No, it was Dwight Clark. Dwight Clark. He went up in the back. It's called the catch. He went up high to catch it. Whatever. Joe Montana was trying to throw the ball out of bounds. Avoid the sack. He underthrew it, and that's how Dwight Clark got up. Montana said, I I wasn't throwing that for a touchdown. I was trying to throw the ball out of the back of the it's end fluke. zone. Fluke. He, he got lucky. You see my point? Any anybody, any champion could lose at any given time. History is filled with hey. upsets. How, you, you take a thoroughbred racehorse, wins the Kentucky Derby. Jimmy, what I tell people, Preakness, the only sure thing, loses the Belmont. only sure thing is there's no such thing as a sure thing. Yeah, Oscar Madison said that on the air. I never heard that. No, I he did. That. I made that up before that show was on the air. That was when he got Felix into gambling, and Felix was winning a lot. Well, they must have stolen my line, because and, I've always said that. There's and, no such thing as a sure Felix thing. And Felix got greedy and put, let it ride, put everything on one horse. The whole lock, stock, and barrel, law, and he lost. Oh, well, with a name like Felix. <laughs> no, because what happened was Oscar was getting his tips from this uh, retired jockey that was working the horses, and this jockey was giving him inside tips on what horse to, horses look good. My buddy Bobby and I down here. But he said, this is not a sure thing, Oscar. He looks good, but it's not a sure thing. So Oscar says, Felix, don't do it. My friend said, it's not a sure thing. When, when my friend says it's a sure thing and he goes like this, then you bet we everything. Had a, we had a sure thing. Bobby Russick and I down here, we spent months, months devising this system to win, not to win a horse race, to win the hardest of all, trifectus. Trifectus. Yeah, one trifectus. We, back then, Mattel, toy, oddly enough, made a horse race handicapping computer back in the early 70s. Oh, shit. Sure. We spent months with formulas and this and that, the jockeys used to all live here at the Sheraton. That was a great toy. We, 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 told, we showed them the, the formula. 
they went, shit, we've never seen a system like this. We tested it on paper from the newspaper. If we were, were putting real money on it, we would have bet. It won six out of 14 trifectas. If you win one out of 14, you're in big money. This was almost 50%. Yeah, they pay according to the odds. Well, Bobby lost the sheets. And we could never come up with it again. You know, I used the pendulum one time at the racetrack over the, over the racing form. When Bob, the accountant, brought me to the track, you know, it won every time, but it, but it picked favorites. You don't win much money with favorites. Well, you know, the odds. But, but, you know, they, well, they won. Going over no, I right? went over. Here's a racing form, right? I hold it. I go over e the name of each horse in each race. But this one... But you got to be careful. And, no. You can't let them see that. Don't consider that cheating. Yeah, but it's mysticism. Don't consider it cheating. Are, are you can't you, you can't, can't card count when you gamble in all the casinos even Jimmy come on man wake up to reality I even did it with slot machines and they were following me around yeah, I just got through telling you don't let them see you do it but it but it's 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 not it's not blatant Jimmy, in other words I'm not tampering with the machine Jimmy, they don't know that don't argue with me they, 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 they not don't argue with them, you don't let them see at the end of the discussion They'll consider it cheating. That's it. Because they make they make their own rules. Right. Don't just don't let them see you do it. Yeah. Like for instance, Bobby Katz, who is um, math professor at Rutgers, he card counted blackjack. A lot of them do. He got banned from three casinos because right. he stood there too long. That's point. Don't let them he, see you. He won three hundred grand in one casino. They threw him out. Jimmy, guys have won more than hundreds of millions, millions. I mean, of I mean, professional card counters in blackjack. They, but even though it's a talent, even though you're using your well, mind, it's kind of hard to do it now with at least five, six, seven decks. Come what on. I'm saying is that the deck is not tampered with. It's it's not like poker in the Wild West. It's they're not marked cards. It's it's a legitimate deck. Well, there's two. No, it's not a deck. It's five, six, and seven decks. Yeah, and and the dealer is not helping you. And they have them in that shoe, and they're all mixed. It's harder to count. Them. But but just think about it. The dealer is not helping you win. But don't, my bottom line is, don't let them see anything. In other words, they they kind of want people to win, but you can't win too much. No, nope. Jimmy, I'm you're arguing. I don't let them see. Anything. That's it. Just don't let them see. Right, anything. and 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 I got news for you. Just because somebody is in charge, that doesn't mean they're always right, and they have the right to make the to make the rules. Yeah. Don't let them No, see I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not compliant with uh, establishment people, you know. Well, if you want to be in their place, you're going to have to be. They'll kick you out if you're doing that. I'm trying to warn you. Yeah. Don't let them see you. Like they argue be, with because me. I know what's I, I know right from wrong is what don't again I've said it six times don't let them see they will ban you and guess what they get away with doing stuff like that don't let them see I see. that's all it takes just don't you, you let don't, them see you don't believe in making wronging writing wrong how are you going to write wrong hot shot go to court Legal. and spend all that money on a lawyer and the whole bit fight a casino my friend uh, John Doe is a card counter he's a math wizard oh, Jimmy, they kicked him out they banned him but you want to do it you're not going to be able to afford going to court to no Bobby Katz could have took it to court but you're not Bobby Katz it's you we're talking about you can't right. do that you're not going to be able to afford it and make things right you're arguing why because, Just don't do it. Don't because do it. because you, in reality, you're really not cheating a system. You're playing by the rules. You know, I don't know how else to get. Uh, I, I, again, I can't get through. I can't. That's get like through. that's like a corporation that has cockamamie rules that the CEO made, right? Well, no, don't get all of that. Now, but the bottom line is, you've got to play by the rules. That's yeah. all there is to it. And, and you're saying that they could they could accuse mysticism as being a form of cheating. Yes. Or they could confiscate that. Then what? You got to fight to get that back too. <laughs> confiscate the pendulum. Yeah, that sounds funny. Though. Well, it's not funny if you lose it, is it? But it's fu it's funny if they have the right to take your take a, a swinging pendulum. Yeah. <laughs> or divining rods. Yeah. Or, you know, and then if they prove that it does work, then you're screwed, aren't you? You have no case. Well, they, I know they're watching it like a hawk. <laughs> no, you think? Hey, let me have a cigarette. Yeah, I gotta be your football hero to get along I with you. You know, there's too many red flags that point to radius and I mean, yeah, you know, get doing. There had to be something going on.
And she changes that story like Donald Trump. Oh, every, her brother stole it. And then she thought. Then he did. Then she says he has an important job with uh, PSC and G. Eighty thousand. Oh no, he don't make eighty. He makes maybe fifty, forty. She's bouncing off the walls with her stories. I know. She's like Donald Trump. Get quiet now. Am I going to lose my apartment? Am I going to get back into one my apartment very soon? Oh yeah, it's just this just a goddamn bump in the road I'm going through right now. Yeah, I like the food stamps. Me? What about you? Fifteen dollars. Come on. Man. I think I think ja Jackie, with her experience, she's qualified to get to the bottom of anything. Fifteen dollars. Come on. You know, she has like over twenty years with Dyfus, right? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven years. I was talking I don't to. Like, you know, I, I get sick of being fucked. Though. I'm tired. Of it. It's unnecessary. I've been fucked enough. But it's unnecessary. I've been fucked. I mean, enough. look at you. You're dealing with your health issue. And and well, you know this, and this happens to you. you. Do you ever know when you go out and hurt people? No. Not you, but so fuck you. You mean malicious, you know? being malicious. Yeah. No, you never do that. And if I ever do by mistake, I always say, I was an am. I'm sorry. Yeah, but you're I nice. Mean, you're generally very nice to everybody. everybody. Well, why does the system keep on f fucking you like that? It, it's not right. It's not, it, it's like, it's incredible. I, I mean, I took napkins over there because they were, okay. they look clean, you know. Like I, I have a, I have a really good question. Am I too strong to let the system beat me? Well, you're a fighter. Hey, what's your question? Oh, my question is: Do people use the word love too loosely without really meaning it? Most people use the word love too loosely without really actually meaning it and or knowing what it means feels like. No vegetation there. Yeah, they lead people on. That's what they're or doing. they don't know what real love is. It's supposed to be unconditional. Right. I mean, they may not know what that means. They're so dumb. Unconditional. They don't know what I mean, I mean, is. like That's why I added. Don't yeah. know what it really. Is. You know, like you hear about a couple that was married for fifty some odd years and they had their diamond anniversary. And I mean, these are old school people that stick it out. In other words, if there's a will, there's a way. What you get used to, they become not just your spouse, but your best friend. Too. Well, but that's a great thing if they know, if they so. can become like my. And they probably drink like fish. Like my, right? Un, my. Right, Jimmy. They drink like fish. So they're intoxicated throughout yeah, the whole marriage. Hey, Jimmy. Jimmy, high high makes everything better. Okay, remember that rule. High makes everything better. Well, that's why I feel so relaxed. I think I always get yeah, it takes the edge off. Don't let anybody tell you different. It works, and you know it. Listen, too. when I you know, when, I, when you're stressed out, a few drinks, what you like? Listen, if I have one or two craft beer, <laughs> if I have one or two craft beers, or I have a glass of uh, sherry, cream sherry, you've heard of Taylor Wine Company. Pour. If I have cream sherry and it relaxes me, it really works. Yeah. I mean, it, it takes the edge off these people. Of, you drink too much. I said, number one, how do you know that? Number two, I don't drink too much. You call me three, four, even five beers is not a lot to drink. So stop your preaching to my ass. What do you do? You don't drink. And, and so you can preach and tell me how to fucking live. And here. they're not real big bottles. So you can shove it. You're a moron. What are their average uh, six pack no, bottles? No, I get it's, it's two beers to a can. It's 24 ounce cans, Jimmy. Oh, is that like the big Fos like, oh, the boy, Fosters? The big, big job. That's like the Fosters yeah, oil that's can. Even more, I think. It's Australian for beer, the mate. The tall boys, the tall boys. Yeah. They're 24 ounces. A regular can or bottle of beer is 12. So it's two beers, really, in one can. So if you drank two cans, that's four. That's equivalent to four beers, right? It's all. So what's the big deal about that? I'm a big drinker. You're not a drinker. I said, no, I said, no, I'm not. You're an asshole. It's not like you're sucking down Irish whiskey or Have something. Have you ever seen me stumble? No, no. 
You're not. No, you're not a drunk. I said I've never seen not you, but I've never seen you have these critical. I've never seen you have fun. You walk around with the same goddamn drink all night long. Oh, you're a party type guy. You're a lot of fun. That, didn't Bob used to do that? So he'd look cool holding a drink, you know. Like that. Well, he used to put water in and make believe it was vodka. You mean Bob the accountant? He used to put water in it so he don't have to spend any money if he was in a bar. Now, if he ever met a girl, what, what's he going to do if he doesn't want to spend money? That's a good question. If you well, ask around, you're going to have to spend some Well, money. he used to shut the night lights off on his mother. The night lights doesn't use more than a, penny, a couple pennies hmm. a night. What is that, like, to, how many watts? Five watts? It's a little... Well, point five. Point five watt bulb? Now you have LEDs. God, which, you know, which I have now. Whatever happened to him? I don't know. Maybe he's dead. Well, I hope not. I hope not. Bob Masidi, his name was Robert Masidi. What's his name? Ro Ro Robert Masidi. Masidi? Yeah. Jimmy Madonna's friend from the past, the accountant, Robert Masidi. Is he still alive? Yeah. He, he had a brother that moved to Atlanta, outside Atlanta. I think it was Marietta. Georgia, because he was in a tech. He was a big time computer Mom's tech guy. guy oh, he's odd. He's, he's odd. odd. He, odd. you know what? I could write a book about him. He was a hoarder. He was, was he? Oh, he was. Yeah, he never threw away anything. His house was loaded with stacks of brochures, magazines, everything. His wallet had the rubber bands around it. He was. <laughs> Hey, let me hold me down. It's a rubber band man. <laughs> oh, he had a song, Rubber yeah, Band rubber Man. man. Yeah. That song sucked. And you never liked it. You never liked, liked it. Did you like Car Wash? Remember? No. Talk about the no. Car Wash. No, I like the beginning of it. Da 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 you're torturing me now. No, but you gotta admit the beginning is a great. No, I don't have to admit it. That song sucked, Jimmy. Stop. It was horrible. <laughs> the car wash Why would anybody want to be so happy and sing a song about working at a Remember car wash? Remember the video? They showed all the tennis dancing. Oh, that's what they. How come I never see that when I drive by a car wash? They look well, you're going to the wrong one. They look unhappy. No, no they're not. You go to the right ones, they're, they're happy as shit. But, and, they sing, and they sing that song. Well, Jack's over on Essex Street. The Jacks, yeah, Jack, Jack's off. Ivan Jackanoff, the, the Russian, the, the Russian athlete, Ivan Jackanoff. Yeah. Oh, he's... You know, it's, um, I was, you know, I was telling, like, look, my, my recent ex, she was my, my best friend next to you. She was the female counterpart of you. That's why it hurts so much. When your relationship becomes thus that you are great friends and you could talk about any subject, that makes it so much difficult when it ends. You know, because you know, because there are a lot of good, like I know another guy, he has models, because he he's went from musician to fashion designer. So he makes tie dye clothes. He has models, but they're, they look great, but what do they sound like when they open their mouth? Well, they're all, they look great for now. They're going to age pretty quick. But I mean, do they have intelligence? Can you hold a conversation? Some do. Maybe these don't. But yeah. some do. Yeah. Let's be honest. They're not all dumb. I mean, I don't know them. I don't know them. Yeah, they're not all stupid. Hey, there are go-go dancers who are quite smart when you well, talk to them. like somebody went up to... Uh, they go to college. Somebody went to Yogi Berra. Once. Excuse me, sir. Do you have the time? And he said, do you mean now? He's a funny fuck. Yeah. He was, what about the pizza? He you says, four, eight, five, a four. I couldn't eat eight. <laughs> I couldn't eat eight slices. Oh, God. So the question was, how many slices would you like me to cut it in? You want to cut it in? Sir, would you like this cut in four or eight slices? It was four. I couldn't eat eight. <laughs> well, they call those Spring, yogiisms, right? Yeah, he was serious. It just came out funny. <laughs> Spring training, he said, I want all you guys to pair, pair off in groups of three. You know, he, he whose neighbor was in St. Louis, Joe Garagiola. Really? They were in the same hey, neighborhood. I like him. I like him. Like but what, did he play ball, actually? Yeah. 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 I think Cubs. I'm not sure, but I think the Cubs. Yeah, he, they were both from St. Louis, you know. Believe it or not, there are Italians in St. Louis. Well, well there are Italians in Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. Let's go. All right. Car wash. Your girl's not showing. What's that? So maybe I can get her to sing you car might, wash. Okay, just wanted you to show this. I'm I'm leaving after 
my meeting with William H. Morrow III, commercial voiceover specialist. And guess what? Look where the truck driver parks. I can't get out. There's my car. There's my car. All right. Finally, the guy leaves. Finally, the guy leaves. Incredible. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.